Hi kids, it's Mr. Rab. Hope you're all doing well. I know you're all adjusting to this distance learning concept and I'm proud of you for, uh, for owning it and doing your best. And I wanted you to know that I've been in touch with all of the teachers that I have substituted for in Carlsbad and Oceanside this school year, yours included, and I offered to do a read aloud. And your teacher was quite enthused about the idea and that's why I'm here today. And the book I'm going to read to you is The Junkyard Wonders. My heart sang as I walked to school with all of the kids on my grandma's block on the first day of school. My mother and father had decided that I could stay just for one year there with my father and grandma in Michigan. In my old school in California, the kids all knew that I had just learned to read, that I used to be dumb. Everyone knew that I was in special classes. Here, no one would know. No one would tease me. And I already had a new friend, Kay. But when I got to the front steps of the school, all the neighborhood kids ran off to their classes. And when I saw Kay and waved to her, she didn't wave back. I just stood there not knowing where to go. And when I showed two strange girls my class card, they got funny looks on their faces. You're in Mrs. Peterson's class, they said. Upstairs, room 206. Room 206, I found it. In the classroom, a gawky boy I'd never seen before yelled out, Hey, the name's Tom. Not spelled T-O-M, but T-H-O-M. Sit here next to me. He had huge dark rim glasses that magnified his eyes. I sat down and looked around. Everyone seemed really different in one way or another. I couldn't put my finger on it. Suddenly, everyone snapped to attention. Our teacher was standing in the doorway. Short and stout, she seemed a little scary, brusque, but her eyes, her eyes were friendly. I was sure of that. She walked up to the podium at the front of the room and slammed an enormous dictionary on top of it. Then she adjusted her glasses, and without saying hello or how are you, she started reading in this no-nonsense voice. The definition of genius, she began. Genius is neither learned nor acquired. It is knowing without experience. It is risking without fear of failure. It is perception without touch. It is understanding without research. It is certainty without proof. It is ability without practice. It is invention without limitations. It is imagination without boundaries. It is creativity without constraints. It is extraordinary intelligence. Then she took a deep breath and slammed the book shut so hard it sounded like a gunshot. Welcome to the junkyard. I am your teacher, Mrs. Peterson. She started walking around the room looking at each of us. I want you to all write the definition on the blackboard. Post it on your mirrors. Look at it every day. Memorize it. The definition describes every one of you. At recess that day, I couldn't wait to ask Tom, why is our class called the junkyard? Because we are, didn't you notice, all of us are different. You know, odd, like stuff in a junkyard. He turned toward the playground. See that super tall kid over there? That's Jody Beach. He got some disease that makes him grow too fast. He's my bodyguard. No one picks on me when he's around. He smiled. Over there, that kid? That's Gibby McDonald. He has Tourette's. There's Stuart Bean. He has diabetes. Me? Well, I have trouble seeing. They call me Sissy Boy because, even so, I love ballet. It's my life. I take ballet, too. At least I did in California. I knew there was something about you I liked, Tom said. I felt like I had found a soulmate in Tom, and since he thought Jody was nifty, so did I. But it only helped a little. When I got home that night, I told Dad and Grandma about my day. I tried to be brave and not let them know how sad I really was. But just as Dad was tucking me into bed, at, into bed, I finally burst into tears. Oh, Daddy, I've been put in a special class again. It's called the Junkyard. Junkyard? What junkyard? My dad asked. That's what everybody calls our class. Darling, my dad said, you are not a quitter. Stick it out for a month. 
If the class doesn't get better, I promise I'll send you back to California. I didn't tell him that when I tried to sit with Kay and her friends at lunch, she said that junkyard kids couldn't sit at their table. The next day, Mrs. Peterson arrived in class with a basket full of small glass bottles. Today, she said, we're going to determine your tribes. She gave us each a vial. Tip some of the liquid on your wrist. Hmm, smell? smell of, some of you smell like lemons, some cinnamon, some almonds. Now, can you smell someone who has the same scent as you? They will be part of your tribe for the year. I sniffed my own wrist. Vanilla. We all strolled around the classroom, sniffing each other's wrists. I sniffed a boy's wrist who was wearing a homespun shirt, and he sniffed mine. Vanilla, we both said. My name's Gilbert McDonald. Call me Gibby. Then the two of us fanned out. I found a girl who smelled like vanilla. Looks like you're in my tribe, I chirped. She just smiled, but didn't answer me. Gibby came over with Tom. Vanilla, he announced. My bodyguard Jody is too. So Tom, Gibby, Jody, and I were a tribe. I asked a shy girl her name. She wrote it down on a piece of paper. Ravan Sauls. Tom told me later that she hadn't spoken as long as he had known her. From then on, whenever there was a project to be done, Mrs. Peterson had the tribes work together. Ravan never talked, but she was a whiz at math. Gibby had tics and shouted for no reason sometimes, but his father was a professor of engineering, and Gibby loved to build things. Boy, was he smart. Jody loved reading. Everything. Particularly poetry. He even wrote poems of his own. Tom made all of us laugh. He was so clever. Me, of course, I could draw. So I became the official journal keeper. The borders were filled with my drawings. It wasn't long before Tom, Jody, Gibby, Ravan, and I were best friends. We did almost everything together. Even after school, we visited Jody, who lived out in a farm east of town. His mother decorated cakes, and she was working on the tallest wedding cake I'd ever seen. We all helped her. One night, Gibby's, Gibby's dad did set up a telescope in his back field and invited the whole class over to look. We could see Saturn with our naked eyes. But with a telescope, we could see Saturn's rings. We never did go to Ravan's house. She lived in a foster home, and I don't think she was too happy there. But her foster mother let her paint beautiful designs on silk from an old World War II parachute, which she brought to school to show us. My dad arranged for the whole class to go to a neighbor's farm, and have a hayride that took us way off into the fields. Our class was special, all right. The junkyard kids were pretty amazing to begin with, and Mrs. Peterson showed us how to shine. She even helped us make badges that said, The Junkyard Wonders. So you can be proud of who you are, she said. That day we got the badges, this mean boy came running to us. Weirdos! Retards! You'd even wear dumbbell pins. A boy named Barton Poole grabbed the pin off my shirt. I started to cry, but then Tommy Gibby ran Barton and his friends away. Right, one of his friends said. Now twinkle toes and da da da, the jerking fool are going to hurt us. We are so scared. Just about then, Jody, big wonderful Jody, appeared from nowhere. The mean boy sure backed off. Someday you aren't going to have this freak to guard you. Barton snarled as he walked away. That day, Mrs. Peterson could see that we were badly shaken. Gibby finally spoke up. Mrs. Peterson, he said, we're all junkyard kids, even though you try to make us feel better about it. We're throwaways, junk, and everyone knows it. Oh, my dear, that's where you're wrong, she said wistfully. Every one of you is my wonder. Don't you realize what a junkyard really is? A place for thing that nobody wants, Jody answered. Oh, it is a place full of wondrous possibilities. What some see as bent and broken throwaways are actually amazing things wanting to be made into something new, something unexpected, something surprising. We all look puzzled. All right, class, get your coats. We're walking to the Melvin Beach junkyard right now, she exclaimed.
All right, we're halfway through. I really enjoyed it. Hope you're all staying safe, being good for your families, and I do miss you guys. I hope to see you before the school year's over. Be good, and I'll see you next week.